think a pivoting point happened when the ice bucket challenge was going on, the ALS ice bucket challenge that went viral on social media. D during my first talk, I was studying how polymers can self-assemble and make higher order structures. And uh, that was sort of my first um, realization. ALS belongs to a family of diseases called repeat expansion disorders. Although ALS and Huntington's disease are most commonly known, over 40 types of repeat expansion disorders exist, causing neurodegeneration and other symptoms in patients. In these disorders, excessive repeating patterns in DNA produce clumps of proteins that interfere with cell function. Like in Huntington's, where the sequence CAG is repeated many times, resulting in abnormal protein production. Previous work by Jane and Ronald Vale at the University of California, San Francisco, showed that RNA fragments also form clumps, like a tangled hairball. Similar to protein aggregates, RNA clumps alone can interfere with cell function. That was uh, our first hypothesis, and then we started delving deeper into um, the biology of ALS and Huntington disease, other uh, disorders in this family. So a good analogy from our day-to-day -day world would be a hairball. You know, hair just collect together, there's no specific orientation in which they come in, and oftentimes they are not associated with anything functional. They're more of a nuisance. It's so it's such a crazy thing when you're just like looking at the microscope at the cells and you're like, these aggregates are so huge taking up such a big portion of the cell. It's um you just want to know more about like what's going on. Recent work from the Gene Lab shows that RNA clumps form outside the nucleus, in the cytoplasm. The team worked with cells in a dish, but this finding may have implications for how these diseases work in patients. But why hadn't anyone observed RNA clumps in the cytoplasm before? In our initial observation, we saw that the RNA is aggregating inside the nucleus of the cell. Now, translation machinery resides in the cytoplasm outside of the nucleus. So one mystery was that if these hairballs are accumulating within the nucleus, how do they start producing these aberrant polypeptides? And so what we think is happening is one of the very common techniques people will use when they're looking at patient tissue is they'll fix with formaldehyde. And what we found in our cell culture models is that when we fix with that really common fixative, that then you're no longer able to detect these cytoplasmic clumps of RNA. And when we change up the fixative and use kind of alternative methods to visualize the RNA, is only then can we actually see the RNA in these cytoplasmic clumps. The sequences flanking the actual repeats themselves actually seems to be governing which one of those routes the repeat RNA takes, whether it's gonna be retained at these nuclear clumps or if it's gonna be exported and form these cytoplasmic clumps. And what really seems to be the difference is that these different sequences flanking the repeats themselves are actually changing whether that repeat RNA undergoes this RAN translation. Usually RNA translation is initiated with a start codon, like AUG, but in RAN translation, there is no clear start point to begin translation. Instead, a single strand of RNA is read in multiple frames. This process produces unneeded proteins, which can also clump together. This mislocalization of RNA binding protein had been observed in these diseases for, for more than a decade now. And um, a key insight that comes from the study is that perhaps these RNA binding proteins are being mislocalized due to an underlying mislocalization of RNA. Uh, we are currently testing that model, and uh, that may have implications on how we think about the disease mechanism and potentially how we go after um, rescuing uh, this pathology. We're kind of transitioning our experiments from the cell culture models that we're using um, into patient tissue. Um, and so we've got some tissue, brain tissue from mice, as well as actual human patients. Um, that we're working in to see, like, do we actually see the RNA, these RNA clumps in the cytoplasm in patients? Um, and I think if we see that, then that opens up a lot of questions in terms of, like, what, what is the effect that the RNA going to these aggregates actually has? 
kind of getting a better understanding of what's actually going on in these cells is like hopefully gonna like open up new avenues for medical treatments down the road.